out your prayer tonight. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out.
Come on, put your hands together, give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, make it loud in here. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands if that's you.
Come on, somebody. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so in this place. Come on, somebody. What a God, what a Savior. If that's you, lift up your hands. We're not ashamed of you. We're not ashamed of you. We're not ashamed of you. Whoa. We're not ashamed of you. 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 Whoa. We're not ashamed of you. We're not ashamed. your holy name in this place heavenly father we thank you for this night we thank you for the privilege and the honor once again to be able to gather together and to be able to lift up your glorious and awesome name we say thank you here tonight for the opportunity once again to be able to worship your awesome name we pray your will to be done your name to be glorified in this place tonight we say thank you for your faithfulness for your love for your patience with us. Oh God, thank you for your patience and your faith. When we have not been faithful, you have remained faithful. And tonight we say thank you for your amazing grace and your mercies that are new every morning. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Man looks at the outward appearance, but you look at the heart. Oh God, we love you in this place. What a God, what a Savior. What a God, what a Savior. What a God, what a Savior. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus we say thank you for the cross here tonight. Thank you for your precious blood that you shed on the cross for every one of us. For when we're against sinners, you died on the cross for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For we know apart from you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. We love you, Lord. We bless your name in this place. We lift up your glorious and awesome name. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the cross. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to continue to have your way in this place. And we thank you for what you have begun in our lives, you shall bring to completion. The work that you have started, you're going to bring to completion for your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. We pray your will to be done and not one of us to walk out of this place the same way we came in. Not one of us to walk out the same way we came in. And we give you all the glory and all the honor for what you have done in our lives. We give you all the glory and all the honor for what you are doing in our midst. And Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor for what you're about to do in our lives. For truly, it's not the way we start the thing, but it's the way we finish. In Jesus' name. And everyone said a good amen. Before you're seated in the presence of the Lord, I want you guys to find five people and say, I'm a finisher, I'm a finisher, I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. I'm gonna worship. I'm a finisher. Come on, I'll find five more people. Say, I'm a finisher in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm a finisher. 
I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. Find five more people. Say, it's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. Come on now. Shot, I'm a finisher for Jesus. And my greatest days are ahead. In Jesus' name. Now somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Fire and Water Saturday night service. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you're glad to be here, say good amen. Amen. Praise God. Some happy people to be in church this mor- tonight. Amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you for joining us here tonight. Um, just real quickly, uh, we do have service here um, for some of the people that are here for the first time. Um, we do have a gift for you on the way out also if you're here for the first time on the way out in the bookstore. If you make yourselves available to that. Um, um, what's the catch? There is no catch. We just want to be a blessing. Uh, look at someone say, just look at someone say, that's just the way we roll here. No catch, no gimmicks, no, 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 none of that, amen. It just, it's just, you know, we just, we just want to be a blessing, amen. It's a way of saying thank you for coming and trusting us with the things of God. If you, if you would, though, take the time to fill out the um, um, card that's in the back there and let us know how you found out about the church. Maybe you're looking for a home church. We'd love to help you with that, amen. So that's on the way out. So God bless you. Again, for everybody that's um, here for the first time, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Watching at home, um, God bless you and thank you for joining us here tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, tomorrow, service starts at 1030, but don't forget breakfast between 9 and 10. And also, free breakfast, by the way. Look at somebody say, that's how we roll. And there is no catch. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, 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 after, after the service tomorrow, after the service tomorrow uh, morning, uh, we're going to have in the, in the patio where we serve breakfast outside and we eat and all that good stuff. Afterwards, after service, um, um, we're going to have, um, what is it, snow cones? So we're going to have snow cones, free snow cones for everybody, for the kids and everything. So there's going to be like a machine out there and, and, and right after service and um, um, a- 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 after we have service, after we lift up the name of the Lord and the word goes forth, amen. Um, afterwards, right outside in the, in the patio area, there'll be a snow cone machine and, and, and snow cones and uh, praise God. Amen. So uh, make, pray that you guys make yourselves available to that after service. If I can quickly at this time have the ushers quickly to come forward at this time also. For <laughs> Look at someone and say, really? I'm going to do that again as we have the ushers to come forward for the offering at this time. Come on now, amen. Some of you got more excited about, you know, uh, uh, any, I'll stop, amen, I'll just leave that on. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you need an offering envelope, uh, if you raise your hand, we'll get one out to you as quickly as possible. There should be one in the seat pocket in front of you. And watching at home, also thank you for helping us and trusting us with a miracle here of fire and water that's impacting the world for the glory of God, Amen. So praise God and everybody here at the church, God bless you for your faithfulness as we continue to go forward for the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 Chris, would you come up here uh, uh, and pray for the for the offering? Amen. Praise. Come on, give him a little more love. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for for allowing us to be here tonight, Lord God, by your mercy and by your grace. We know that you're going to do amazing things, Lord Lord God. So open up every heart, open up every ear, Lord God, to hear the word that's going to go forth tonight, Lord God, and change people, Lord God, from the inside out, Lord. We give to you right now, Lord God, joyfully, Lord God, because you've given it to us freely, Lord God. And we ask that you would just bless it and multiply it and use it all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Chris, why don't you stand, come up here because you guys are going to take over here in a second just for a few more minutes. we got a couple more songs and then before we get to our speaker tonight. And um, as we take the offer, you guys go ahead and serve the people. Thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, you got the group coming up there. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to you guys right now as we take the offering. Amen. Okay, praise God. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody happy to be in the house tonight? It's okay to have fun in church, right? Amen, amen. We just got a few songs for you tonight. The main attraction tonight, you know, is uh, it's definitely not us. It's, it's the Lord, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we got a mighty man of God coming up right after us. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just encouraged to, to hear what he's going to say. So uh, yeah, yeah. praise the Lord. So the first song we're going to do, uh, a lot of you guys have heard it, but it's, um, it's Praise Him Like That. For you guys that don't know, we're the voice, and um, we're just three, three brothers who happen to be saved by God's grace. Come on. And now we're using the gift that the devil used to use, you know, for God's glory. So praise the Lord. Praise God. If you guys want to stand up on your feet too, then that's totally fine. If after the offering is passed around, let's praise him. Amen. We praise him because of who he is. He's worthy. Not because, you know, all the blessings, you know, it's easy to praise him when things are going good. Come on. Hands in the sky, voice lifted high, declaring who he is. I declare, yeah, praise him like that, like that. Like that, like that, like that, yeah, I praise him like that. Come on, y'all. Hands in the sky, voice lifted high, declaring who he is. I declare, yeah, praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on now. Bless the most high, forever on the throne. Not a man that should lie, got a word to get me flowing. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 19. Even when I have nothing, tell you something first. Walk through wars like military tanks. Serve the mighty God who will always give strength. Lord of my salvation, the reason I have joy. Approaching revelation, no longer a little boy. Been a walk in high hills, many robs, still and kill. When the vines lack fruit, are you really that deceived? I'm nothing but a tree. By many waters, everything prospers. See you tripping in the drought, my leaves don't wither. Come get a slice of this eternal life. It starts with the Christ. When death and resurrection, forever in his presence. I praise him like that. Proper praise him like that. Come on, hands in the sky, voice lifted high, declaring who he is, loud and clear. Yeah, I praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on now, hands in the sky, voice lifted high, declaring who he is, loud and clear. Yeah, I praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on now. God. So many reasons to praise his name. He's amazing. This world ain't been the same ever since he came. Took away the pain. Paid the price for all sin on the cross was slain. So I'm looking out the window and all I see is pain. Gotta remember there's no reason why I shouldn't complain. He's love. He gave it all, man. Simple and plain. This ain't a game. I don't know why some of you playing. Chasing things in this world only leaving you drained. You won't refresh. Lift your hands up as high as you can. Let out your best shout and let your voice proclaim. Wow. Sing it aloud that Jesus reigns. Thank you, Father, our creator who made everything. I'm going to praise him through the drought without a doubt in the brain. That I know one day he's going to bring the rain. You can trust in the Lord, man, because he don't change. Get your hands in the sky, voice lift it high. Declaring who he is, I declare, yeah, I praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on, y'all. Hands in the sky, voice lift it high. Declaring who he is, I declare, yeah, I praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on. Christ be my king, for him I stay repping, and he paid the path to heaven. His wage can't be stepping, I'll forever pay homage, I'm eternally indebted. His blood, yeah, he shed it, made me, yeah, he did it. As to why I don't have the slightest clue, death would have been my due if I had to choose. But that's why he died, and I, I, a you. He's gracious, 365, 24, 7, every second of the minute. He's pouring out blessing, that I'm the one to get him. Don't you get it? He's good all the time. So the vibe on my brain, stay turned up high. And he's more than the fact, he's the truth, and the way to the life. That your life is the proof, and the tomb is vacant. And he to my life, what he be the lock. So that's the reason why I constantly got my hands in the sky. Come on, voice something high. Declaring who he is, I declare, yeah, I praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on, y'all. Hands in the sky, voice lifted high. Declaring who he is, I declare, yeah. Yeah, I praise him like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I praise him like that. Come on, so get your hands in the sky. Voice up to the high, declare who he is. I declare, yeah, I praise him like that. Go ahead and praise him like that. Yeah, come on, so get your hands in the sky. Voice up to the high, declare who he is. I declare, yeah, I praise him like that. Yeah, praise him like that. 
Come on now, somebody Woo! praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. Well, well, we got a new song for you guys tonight as well because a lot of people have been asking us, you know, are you guys working on anything? And we do got a new mixtape that we are working on. And if you're wondering what that is, it, it's a CD that has some original beats and some beats are not original, but every lyric is original and God inspired. Amen. So, um, so, 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 so we got a new, new, new song for you guys called Set Me Free. And a bunch of you guys might recognize the tune, but Jesus then got a hold of it. Amen. So. I know you get drunk, get high on them trees. I know you up all night, all the drugs that make it hard to sleep. You think that it's fun, but it's not how it's supposed to be. So let Jesus set you free. Come on, hey. As resilient as butter, so I'm melt when the heat's hot. I'm to your smother, Chris Tucker, because I see I'm going back to rehab. Let me give you the recap. Young while they're free. About a relapse, more like dumb when I'm trapped on a black berry, still like some black Sarah chains. At least that's how it was for me. Like one to two to three years ago, I was so slow, couldn't memorize my flow. Found Jesus on a road opposite of mine. Seen freedom and glory, heard the world's greatest story about a man who died and got raised on the third day. Get a life for the same, get a life for the elect, now clean and redeem. Now look to your friend and repeat after me, saying, I'm free, I'm free. I'm free. I know you get drunk, get high on them trees. I know you up all night on the drugs that make it hard to sleep. You think that it's fun, but it's not how it's supposed to be. So let Jesus set you free. Well, there you are at the party. Tipping that cup up, but it's not enough, so you lighting that blunt up. Laughing and joking, thinking, man, this is fun stuff. Take a couple of shots, pretty soon you be dumb drunk. Instead of passing out, you take some coke to get woke up. Now you caught in a cycle that's too hard to get broke from. Started out fun, got you feeling so undone. You started out young, now you're older than you was before. And you ain't got nothing to show for, except for a soul that's broken and so so. I want you as high, now you lower than the floor. Screaming out to the sky, saying, what am I here for? I tell you this. There's an answer to your questions. His name is Jesus and he died for your addictions. Only he can set you free from your prison. Give it to him. Receive a life worth living. Get high on them trees. I know you up all night on the drugs that make it hard to sleep. You think that it's fun, but it's not how it's supposed to be. So let Jesus set you free. Come on, Chris. To party, blow, throw, pour in, in your body. Might have kissed them a distance. Ain't no telling, cause you remember what, what happened. Is. Yeah, fools live like that. Yep, go to cloud nine just to fall right back to the pain and the thing that the drugs couldn't change in the first place. The next hit ain't as good as the first taste. Change the mind till your life's wasted. Dying young for a sensation. She didn't plan to get pregnant, so she killed a baby. Left the party drunk driving and he didn't make it. Yeah, indulge in your sin and it's bound to turn tragic. If it's not in this life, then the one that's coming after it won't be fun. So you need to sober up before it happens. Life is better with the Lord. Take it from a poor man. you get drunk. Come on, get high on them trees. I know you up all night on the drugs that make it hard to sleep. You think that it's fun, but it's not how it's supposed to be. So let Jesus set you free. Yeah, God Woo! bless you Oh, come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, real quick, Ian, why don't you let them know um, um, what's in the bookstore so if they want to find, because a lot of times right after you guys want to find out about the music, where can they go get the music at? Yeah, every time, it seems like after Minister, people come up and ask for CDs, and we try to have them, but um, sometimes we don't, and we apologize for that. But uh, we, uh, you know, the, the Lord opened the door, and we were able to, um, to get it on uh, Facebook and Reverb Nation, so we have a, a paper in the bookstore. If you guys want to pick that up, it'll give you a link. You can go download it and listen to it for free, so praise God. All right, give him a big God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many people think we should um, 
have them come back on a Saturday and do a whole concert, like a whole service. It's been a while. I think it's been, it's been, I think it's been about a year. It's been almost a year last time they were in here doing that. So you know what? We're going to put something together this summer. This summer we're going to have them back, amen, for the whole service, for the whole service, amen. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands and say these words, Jesus, my heart is open to receive your word, life-changing word. I give you permission to mess me up so I can mess up others. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let me, um, um, before we get our, yeah, please, um, our guest speaker here, praise God. Uh, after a uh, 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 service, right after uh, um, uh, O'Brien um, shares his um, a testimony and his heart here tonight, um, he's going to spend about 15 minutes or so to, to, like, I know some of you guys have got footballs and some things, you know, some things to um, autograph. Um, he's going to stay afterwards, and then he'll be back here tomorrow morning, okay? So for about 15 minutes, he'll be up here, and we're going to do it, and I'll give instruction how we'll do this. But please, please, so we can quickly get through, you know, so everyone can get, an, you know, that has brought something because he, he, he's willing to, like, you know, he, he, his heart's great. When he first came back after um, 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 winning the Super Bowl, coming back to the church, first thing he says, you know, I'm just, I, I just want to, I want, you know, just ready to go, you know, for, and it was about the kingdom of God, amen? And he's kept his word. Um, lets you know what, where his heart is and his family's heart is, amen. Just wanting to serve the Lord. He's been on TBN this past week and just, you know, glorifying the name of the Lord. And, and, um, and I, I, by the grace of God, a door is being opened up where it's going to be, he's going to be able to share his heart and his testimony internationally also. So uh, um, to God be the glory. And, and that's why, and I believe that's why God's blessing his family and um, what he's doing because he's putting God first, without a doubt, amen. Without a doubt. But watch this. Please, because sometimes what happens, and last time we had, like, you know, uh, um, Jason Wright and, and Timmy Hightower that was here, some of you guys, you know, were, were going through the lines a couple times. Some were bringing, you know, multiple things to get signed. Please, one thing per person or per family, if it's a football, if it's a picture together, but one thing so we can be a blessing so everyone can get in, and at the same time we can be sensitive to, to, to the man of God here tonight. And, and, and then when we, we kind of wrap it up, we'll be, he'll be back here tomorrow night, tomorrow morning, behind the pulpit again tomorrow morning, so we'd encourage you to come back tomorrow, okay? Uh, are we good? Amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Well, it is a great honor tonight to have with us, praise God, Super Bowl champion. Now watch this. And you know why I'm excited? Because we remember, and you know, and, and, and everyone in it, because you know he's part, him and his family is part of this church. Because when he left, remember, Arizona, and he went to Seattle, we've been praying. Remember, we've been praying. Praise the Lord. And you guys have prayed for him because people have prayed throughout the year while you're playing and stuff like that. And um, to God be the glory. Amen. Look at what God's done. Amen. And um, so tonight, great, great honor. Amen. Praise the Lord. With us tonight, praise the Lord. Um, Super Bowl, let me say it right, Super Bowl winner from the Seattle Seahawks, O'Brien Schofield. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Excuse me. Y'all can be seated. You can be seated. <laughs> love you too. Love you too. I'm going to tell you right now, forgive me if I get emotional because my story, I live it every day. I know without a doubt that I'm only here because of God. <laughs> I'm only been blessed because of God. I'm only fortunate with the things I have because of my faithfulness and my hard work and just really trusting and believing in God. So um, I'm O'Brien Schofield. I was born in Camden, South Carolina. I'm 27 years old. I have a wife. I have three children. My wife is saved. My wife is saved. <laughs> That's my backbone right there. That's the one who, uh, the nights I struggled when things weren't going good, that's the one who stayed in my ear, who encouraged me, who kept my heart right. And, uh, man, I just, I just owe it all to her. So um, I want to start off by saying that God is good, man. God is good. God is good. I was born in Camden, South Carolina. My mother was 16 years old when she had me. My dad was 19. My dad immediately went to the military, so I didn't meet my father until I was two years old. Uh, 
So I basically grew up with my just my mother for a while. My grandparents was the only child, so you know I was spoiled. Kind of got my way for a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know how that is. And uh, next thing I know, uh, my dad comes back from Singapore. Okay, uh, that's where he was stationed. At. He was in Singapore. Came back to South Carolina, and he got new orders to move to Jacksonville, Florida. Something I did not want to do. I wanted to stay with my grandparents. So I caused a bit of a scene, and I was able to stay for a little bit. And uh, my grandmother is the one who uh, really kept my mom in church and, you know, introduced God to me. And from the age of three that I knew I was called to be ordained at some point in my life to, to preach the word of God. And I, I, I never, never, never fell away from that. You know, as many struggles as ups and downs and trials and tribulations that I've been through, I always, always kept a relationship with God. Man. That's real right there. That's real. I, I think about coming to church here all the time, and I see how many people give their life to God every Sunday, you know, different age groups, ethnic, different ethnic groups, and it's amazing to me. You know, like, I, I got a chance to know God my whole life. I don't know what my life would have been like if I would have met him late. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'm telling you. Okay, so uh, I moved to Jacksonville, Florida. I'm there for three years. My mom was the one who put me in sports. My dad was just really busy with, you know, the military, working 14, 15 hours, going out to sea six months at a time. So I was kind of like a mama's boy. You know, I didn't have a relationship with my father. And when, when he did come around, you know, you know, he was drunk a lot. You know, he was mean, angry. And I didn't have a, a bright memory of my father as a youth. You know, I seen him beat my mother. I've seen, uh, you know, him just basically be gone. You know, even though he's there in the household, he wasn't there. You know, and that's one thing that when I got older, I was like, when I have children, I'm going to be a great father. I'm a father of my children. I'm a father of my children. So not having a relationship with my father, my mom tried to play both roles, you know, keep me in the sports, basketball, football, baseball. And, uh, I mean, it was great, you know. I was kind of like a punk at the time because, uh, I mean, I was just soft, man. I was, I, was, I was by my mom, so she's like, you got to get out of this stage. <laughs> you got to get out of this stage. So she put me in the sports, and, you know, it was something that I liked. I didn't get to play it that much um, because my dad got stationed in London, England. So I moved there when I was seven, and there was no – American football, it was soccer, so I was playing soccer. I did whatever I could. My, uh, my parents put me in the British school system, so I got a chance to, to really experience the culture of, of England. And as a young kid, I didn't understand what that did for me as an adult, but I mean, man, I'm open to everything. You know, different foods, meeting different people. You know, I'm not racist or anything like that, because I mean, it's, there is racism, but the, the door that God opened up for me, an international door at a young age, not really realizing the, the people that I would, I would meet, the things I would experience in my life, and to know that God still had my back. And <laughs> it don't matter how old you are, you can have a relationship with God. You can serve God. And uh, when, I was, when I was seven years old, uh, I remember uh, being on a school bus you know how kids are, they tease you, oh, you like such and such, you know, kissing in the tree, all that stuff. I'm like, you know, no, I don't like this girl like that, you know, and the girl got offended. And uh, she basically told her father that I said that I didn't like white people. And her father happened to be the uh, captain over the whole military base. So my dad was not happy. <laughs> he was not happy with me. And, uh, you know, I tried to explain to him that, you know, you guys don't even raise me like that. Like, I would never say anything like that. So um, my dad didn't know how to deal with me because he didn't have a relationship with me. So being in the military, all he knew was punishment, grounding, all these things. So at seven years old, I was grounded for a whole year. Oh yeah, a full year. Wow. And uh, when I say punishment, I'm not talking about watching TV, playing video games. I'm talking about in your room, you stay upstairs until dinner's ready type thing. I was on punishment so long that my mother's friends and my father's friends didn't even know they had a son. That's how serious it was. So I didn't realize it until I got older and I got delivered from some things 
that God showed me that I was like, in a way, institutionalized. Because I got to a point where I would be comfortable by myself. You know, like, I felt like I didn't need too many people. If, if things got tough, I'm in my room. I didn't deal with problems. If, if things came up in my life, I just turned cheek and looked the other way and tried to avoid the whole situation. I was non-confrontational. And I don't know how you could be non-confrontational as a football player. <laughs> you got to be ready to go. So um, at that point in my life, you know, that's when I really learned how to pray and hear from God and talk to God. And I mean, to, to get out of that situation, to even be sane <laughs> at that age, you know, it was, it was unreal. And, and that's something it still impacts me today because, I mean, it wasn't even until a year ago where I really got delivered from that because I would, I would spend time with my family. They come and see me, I'll see them for like 20 minutes and I'm like in my room. And I, I couldn't help it because that's, that's how my life was with them, you know? So um, I really asked God to like, you know, heal me from that, you know, M make me a person that I, I can be around people. Cause I mean, once you get to know me, like I'm a great person. Like I love to talk to people, I have a big heart, but I had a problem just socializing normally at the beginning. Like I had to get to know you, I had to warm up to you. I, I would be really standoffish, but not anymore, <laughs> not anymore. Um, you, can't, you can't do that when, when you're serving the Lord and he's having you go and, and minister to people and bless people. You got to be able to approach and talk to people from all walks of life. And right there, that's just something God did for me right there. Um, I was in England when Princess Diana passed away. And that was something significant, you know, being over there and experiencing all of that and really understanding, you know, the weight that one person can hold for a country. And for me, I was like, man, like, I want to be that important to, to a, a group of people or to a state or to a city where, you know, people come out to see me, you know, whether it's me speaking or if I pass on. So um, after I moved from London, England, my, my, my father was stationed in Chicago, North Chicago, Illinois, and that's where my parents are now. So I basically say I'm from Chicago because that's where my, my childhood is. <laughs> that's where my childhood is. So uh, being a base kid, I mean, uh, in school, you got no respect. You got no respect if your parents was in the military, just you were the underdog always. So coming into a situation where Pop Warner, Little League, I mean, man, some of these parents are vicious, man. They're serious about their kids. So... Uh, it's, it's a couple political battles I had to go through just because, you know, I was, I was a new guy and, you know, I had to earn my keep. So my whole life and a the theme of my life is being the underdog, being the guy everybody doubted, said that I couldn't do it, I wasn't good enough, you should quit, you should give up, what are you going to do now, who do you think you are? Those are tags I've heard. And uh, it's funny because I am somebody with God. I am. I am. And I'm going to tell you, it, I mean, the way God hit my life, it was like a whirlwind. It was like a whirlwind where I can only tell you it was nobody but God. There's no conspiracy. There's no fate. There's nothing like that. It was God. It was his plan. It was his purpose. And for me, I had to realize how was I going to serve the Lord? How was I going to build my relationship? So I became a praise dancer at my church. A praise dance. <laughs> yeah. I might be big now, but I wasn't always the size. <laughs> but I mean, I love the Lord. I, I really do, you know. And, you know, despite ups and downs, despite my trials, like God has just continuously blessed me. He's been, he's been so good to me. Um, I remember when I first started praise dancing, um, we used to wear the mind makeup, and we used to praise dance using the mind. And uh, I was in gym. It was my sophomore year. I was in gym, was playing basketball. I broke my foot. And uh, went to the doctor. They said, uh, you have a Jones fracture. It's one of the worst fractures because you can't really have surgery. It just kind of has to heal on its own. Well, this was a Wednesday. On Sunday, I was supposed to praise dance to the song Stand by Donnie McClurkin. So that's, to me, this is one of my first real tests as a young adult to really put my faith in God. Because, I mean, dancing to me was everything. I mean, that's when I really felt one with God. I felt like I was in that holy place. And to, 
to be in a situation where someone was going to tell me this is not what I'm able to do, I refuse to believe that. So, you know, I wore like two socks, tied my shoe really tight, and I'm like, I'm getting up there and I'm dancing, you know, I'm dancing. And in the midst of me dancing, I mean, you can see, I wish I had the video, but I was, you know, I was struggling, you know, I couldn't really walk. But as the song went on, I started running, I started jumping, and I was like, I'm healed. I'm healed. So I go back to the doctor on that Monday, and they find no fracture. Nothing. 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 See, that's the God I serve right there. Miraculous miracles. Miraculous belief. So I'm going to challenge you something that I did in my life. When you're going through something, when you pray about it, believe what you're praying. Believe what you're praying. And that's something that my wife was really big on me on because I'll pray 90 times for the same thing. And I'll ask her to pray for me, and she'll pray one time and be like, okay, it's done. And I'll be like, I want you to pray like one more time. <laughs> but she really taught me to just believe in what you say the first time. That's it. God said you need to have the faith of a mustard seed. And that's it. A mustard seed. So with my faith at a young age, you know, just surviving in North Chicago. I mean, I didn't even have a thousand kids in my school. It was mainly Latino and African American. We had metal detectors to get into school. Like, we had to wear a uniform. Oh, it was, it was a real deal. It was a real deal. The education was poor. Uh, you know, I, could, I went to college and didn't even know how to write a paper type thing. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of those things where you got to find your way out of this situation. And uh, so I, I was playing uh, football my freshman year. Uh, played wide receiver at the time, was pretty good, ended up getting moved up to varsity during the playoffs. And then my second year as a sophomore, they put me on varsity but didn't play me at all. And one of my coaches said, uh, hey, man, if you want to make it, come play defense. I'll get, you, I'll get you to college. I said, okay. So I started playing defensive end. And uh, football was my outlet. You know, it was, it was that thing that helped me get away from my – my living situation at home, my, my father not being there. Um, I, mean, he was, I mean, he was stern, you know, he, he was great at what he did, but I don't think at the time he knew how to decipher being a father and when being at work, you know, it was like work, you know, it was, it was, it was serious, man. And uh, my whole thing was I would, I would participate in any school function, anything I could to not be at home, <laughs> anything I could do, you know, and um, Football, football was one of those things that when I was about six years old, I told my mom, look, uh, I want to play in the NFL. It's something that I want to do, and I believe I can do it. And how many of you know that the power of life and death is in the tongue? <laughs> it's in the tongue. Because from six years old, I spoke that all the way through college. All the way through college. I'm going to the NFL. Despite of how my situations looked, despite of the circumstances, despite of who was doubting me. Because when God is for you, who could be against you? When God is for you, who could be against you? I, uh, my junior year, I had a really good junior year in high school. Uh, you know, my mom, she uh, put me in this online recruiting thing that, you know, had schools sending me letters. I mean, I had boxes of letters from schools. I was like, wow, this is unreal. You know, I got invited to the Nike football camp. I got invited to all these different universities to work out. And I'm like, I'm there. You know, everything I can do, if I got to cut grass to save half the money, mom, get me there, you know. And I had a coach in high school that really believed in me. I mean, he would take the school bus <laughs> and, and drive me out to Iowa, you know, to, for these camps. And... Um, how many of you know it only takes one person to believe in you <laughs> for you to accomplish something? One person, whether it was your mother, your, your, your father, your uncle, that believed in you and knew you could be a better person, that pushed you that, that, for, for greatness. And, uh, man, I was, just, I was just blessed, man, just to have that type of favor over my life. But nonetheless, God was always first in my life. I did all his work at church. 
I praised dance, I traveled, I served in youth ministry. I mean, I did everything because I, I knew how good God was to me. And I knew that when God opens up a door, can't no man, can't no devil close it. And that's the truth. So I'm going into my, my, my senior year, and uh, my coach calls me down like, uh, I'm, in, I'm in lunch, you know, we're clowning around. And they get on the loudspeaker like, O'Brien well, Schofield, get to the office now. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? My dad's going to kill me. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. My dad's going to kill me. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> so I get there, and, like, all my coaches are, like, standing in the office, and they're all, like, got this crazy look on their face, and I'm just like, what's going on? And I was like, dude, you just got five scholarship offers. And I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is the kid that everyone said couldn't do it, wasn't good enough, you're a base kid. And then it came some level of respect. Now they saw, whoa, I'm bringing out all these universities just to come watch me practice. My school is getting notarized. And other athletes that were there with that would normally not get a chance, not be seen, they were, they were seen because of what I was doing, and because my relationship with God, and because the corporate anointing, the corporate blessing. <laughs> Those people were attached to me, and they got blessed in the midst. And I realized that. So um, this is the craziest thing. So I had a teacher that, you know, she, she, I felt that she despised me a little bit because, um, I mean, I was a very likable, likable student. And, I mean, <laughs> you know how jealousy is. You know how envy is. When, when, things are, when things are going good, when you seem to be blessed, when you seem to be happy, that's when the haters come out. You know, and uh, it was just like, how could you hate? You're just looking at the right now. You have no clue what I've been through just to get this. You don't know how many nights I stayed in my room and I cried and I asked God to get me out of this situation, provide a way. God, I don't want, I, I told him, God, I don't want to work a normal job. I don't, I don't think I can. <laughs> I've been taking orders from my dad so long. I was like, I, I don't want to take too many more orders. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I had, I had so many things motivating me to, to get out of North Chicago, to, to get out of this situation. But my prayer life, my relationship with God, the things that was going on with church, man, it was, just, it was just awesome in my life. It was so awesome. So I had this teacher that, you know, kind of hated on me. And um, after my finals, she gave me an incomplete. And I mean, I did my work, and she wanted me to, to take my test again. So I ended up getting a D in the class, and she tried to fail me, which would cause me not to get my scholarship at Wisconsin. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> prayer changes things. Because regardless of what she said, what she did, when that report card came out, I had a B in the class. <laughs> That's God again. That's God showing up again. Man, when God said, do not touch my anointed, he meant that. <laughs> he meant that. He meant that. He meant that. And uh, as a senior um, at my church in uh, Chicago, we had this youth rally. And, man, those are important. When you guys have those things, man, attend them. Get your kids in those things because that one rally changed my life. I had a prophet come to church and he saw me praise dancing and he kind of watched me and uh, during service, God had a word for me. And I've held on to this word all the way up until this point and I'm still holding on to it. He said, because you made God's name big on the stage, he's going to make your name big. Yeah. That's what he told me. He said, as you continue to keep God first and trust in the Lord, God's going to continue to elevate you, continue to bless you, and you're going to be big. You're going to touch multitudes of people. And it's like, at 17, I'm like, okay, you know, just smiling, like, <laughs> all right, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. And um, so I ended up getting my, uh, I ended up finding out my father was a, uh, getting stationed in Japan, and my mother didn't want to go over to Japan. So he was going to be stationed there for three years. And uh, I chose to go to University of Wisconsin uh, because it was close to Chicago. It was a two-and-a-half-hour drive, so my mom could, you know, come and see me and support me in games. And if I ever needed to come home, 
I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad trip home. So, you know, I get to school at Wisconsin and I'm just like, wow, <laughs> 40,000 students, you know, only 4% of the population was African American. So I'm just like, this is a culture shock. <laughs> I'm scared to talk to people. I don't know what to do, you know, and uh, I get there my first day of class, the teacher goes, uh, all right, you know, take out your syllabus. We're going to outline you for your next paper, your first paper is going to be an eight-page paper. And I'm like, oh my God, like I never wrote a one-page paper. I don't know. So, <laughs> I don't know. Help me. <laughs> Help me. You know, so I, I got, I was the guy that, you know, I had to have the tutors. I had to have somebody like just pushing me, you know, because at the point in time in my life, like I've, I've been like this. My parents had me like this. You can't do that. And they never gave me a reason why, you know. No, you can't do this. Why? Because I said so. Well, all right. <laughs> you know, and in a way that kind of messed me up, because when I got to college, like I just I was curious, you know, I just wanted why why couldn't I do that? Oh, ouch, that's why I can't do that. You know, I was a guy that had to get burned a couple times before I actually learned that this is what you're not supposed to do. You know, my parents did have, you know, my best interest, but to to understand that at an older age, I was like, okay, God, I need to find a church home. Let me find a church home. So I'm, I attended like three different churches, found one that I liked. Went there a couple times, and I was, like, actively going. It was good, man. Life was good. Everything was on the up and up. And uh, I remember, uh, I mean, here I am. I'm 18 years old. I'm in this service where they just, uh, on Tuesday nights, they just did praise and worship for, like, an hour. You just go there and do praise and worship. And I was a dancer, so I, I would be there. And uh, this, I was, the spirit was really high in there, and I started speaking in tongues. And this lady turned around and said, we don't do that here. And I was like, whoa, you know, and that, that, that messed me up because I, in my environment, my, my church home, me, speaking in tongues, shouting, laying on the hands, like, I believe it all. And to, to be somewhere where they restricted me from doing that, I couldn't serve there. I couldn't serve there. And in a way that, that, that helped me because the, the things that were going on as the years went on in that church, it, it wasn't good. But at the same time, like, I, didn't, I wasn't getting fed consistently, you know, the word. So I started partying, having a good time, like doing just enough in school to get by, sleeping in class. I mean, I was just part of the group, what 70% of the guys there are doing. It, I mean, it, it's that serious. You have a choice to do it or not. And if you don't, you flunk out and on to the next recruit, you know. So I didn't realize that until it got really real for me. Um, my coach had asked me to change positions to play linebacker, and I was a defensive end, so I had no clue what to do. So I ended up red shirting my freshman year. And um, after my freshman year, my coach had saw me walking down the hall one day, put me in the office, said, hey, uh, OB, let me talk to you for a second. I'm like, oh, hey, coach, how you doing? Uh, well, I just want to let you know that, um, honestly, I I'm thinking that you should look into transferring to another school because I don't think you fit in here. And I'm like, wow. You know, like here I am working my butt off in high school to get this scholarship, and I got this guy telling me that I'm not worthy enough to be here. Well, I was like, well, I, I'm a good person. I don't get in trouble, so you're going to have to kick me out because it's a free scholarship. <laughs> There's no way I could tell my parents that, uh, you know, I'm transferring. And, I mean, it was tough. They made it really tough on me. They talked about me. I had personal attacks. I mean, it was... It was hard because I didn't have my father to talk to. You know, it was a situation where I'm telling my mom and she's like all emotional. And I'm like, all right, I don't need this right now. You know, I need somebody to tell me how to handle it, you know? And I mean, it was rough, man. It, it, it was rough. I mean, I remember speaking like a couple of times I'll speak to my coach and he'll mumble some crazy stuff to me. And I'm like, wow, like, like, what is it about me that is causing this reaction? What did I do? But soon to come to find out it wasn't me. It was a God in me that the devil was trying to break down. He started early trying to deter my faith and my fight and my drive to kill all this. I wouldn't even be standing here. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, I can't believe he said this to me. I'm going in as a red shirt sophomore. Uh, I mean, I, which makes me a junior in, in school. And by my junior year, I'm still not playing. Like, I'm not even on the field. Like, I'm just a scout team player, practice player. 
and all my other friends that came in with me, everybody's playing, either they're on defense or special teams, and I'm just, I'm not on the field. I mean, I'm athletic. I ran a 4'4", 40. I was 245 pounds. I was, like, doing everything I could possibly do. And it got to the point where I was like, man, I can't take this anymore. God, you said you wouldn't put more on me than I can bear. I need you to show up. I need you to show up. Because if you don't show up right now, I'm going to give up. So I had a, a friend in college that he had came to me one day. I was like, oh, B, man, a couple of the guys talking and, like, we feel real bad for you, how the coach is treating you, but you can't, you, you can't, you can't let it get to you. You can't let the coaches see you down because if, if they see you, they're going to keep putting their foot on you. So I'm like, man. He said, this is what you need to do. Our offense at the time was ranked number three in the nation. He said, you go to practice and you beat up on these guys in practice every day. This is your best competition. If you can dominate against these guys in practice, what can you do in the game? So I'm like, okay. So, I mean, I got dressed for practice like it was a game. I got to the point where I was like, God, it's either now or never. <laughs> if anything, I'm going to give it all I got. So I went to practice, and I mean, coaches were mad at me, boy. Who do you think you are <laughs> going this hard in practice? You're trying to injure our left tackle, trying to injure our quarterback. I'm like, look here, you're not putting me on the field, so I got to do what I got to do. So I'm just, I'm just sitting there, still nothing. Didn't play at all that whole season. We go, into, uh, we go into bowl prep, and bowl prep is like we make it to a bowl game. You get a month before the bowl game to practice, so they let the younger guys practice so they can develop them and get ready for next season and see you know, what they got to do as far as recruiting. So the guy that was starting at defensive end, uh, he, was, he was injured. So the coach was like, you know what, sit out a week, you know, get healthy. We're going to let the young guys uh, take some reps. Then the second guy that was in front of me, I was a third string. This is the guy that told me to go hard and practice like it's a game. He was one of my really good friends. And uh, his girlfriend was having a baby, so he was gone for four days. So who they had to put in? Me. <laughs> they had to put me in. They had to put me in. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I didn't stay faithful, if I didn't wait on the Lord, if I didn't really put work with my faith as far as I believe this can happen, but I got to train hard. I got to eat right. I got to take care of my business in school so I could be ready on that day when my name's called. Because opportunity is slim in life. It's slim in sports. It's slim from giving your life to God and to leaving here and something happening to you and you're not making it to heaven. That's how slim this opportunity is. This opportunity. I know a lot of you guys probably wanted to get different promotions and stuff at work, and you know it's opportunity. Are you qualified? Are you overqualified? Are you certified? And you feel like the times you certify, that's when they, they hit you with something like, oh, you're, oh you're, too, you're too qualified. How do you be too qualified for something? That means I would do a great job at it, don't you think? You're too qualified. We don't want to find somebody that can, can do it all. We want you to, be able to do just this one job so we can control you. That's what it is. So here I am. Just like, all right, let's go. Put me in. First snap, they run a power, smack the running back. Everybody's getting hyped. I'm like, get off me. <laughs> I'm feeling myself now. Get off me. I said, I got anger right now. You know, this is all type of anger in me. I was like, God, calm me down because I need to be in control. This is you. You know what I'm saying? They run a toss my play. I shut it down again. Boom. My coach is like, okay, OB. I'm like, okay, coach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because it was a boldness in me after that point where it was like I messed up because I was trying to please man. I was trying to do everything man wanted me to do. You got to do it this way. You got to do it that way. When God had already told me back in high school that you made my name big, I'm going to make your name big. So it's something I had to hold on to and what I call a track record. If you know anything about credit, you have a track record. That's how they, that's how they judge your credit. So for me, God's credibility with me is my track record. Everything I've been through, everything he took me out of, the things he protected me from, the nights I could have been shot, I could have been hit, I could have been dead, and he saved me. <laughs> that's my track record. That's a track record. 
So every time the going gets tough, I look back to when my foot was broke and I was jumping on the stage like a wild man because I had radical faith. Radical faith. Couldn't nobody tell me that God couldn't do nothing for me. Matthew 19, 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things. All things. What is all things? All things. Well, if all things is all things, when you pray for something, you got to believe in that thing. That thing, that very thing you pray for, don't put a limitation on your God, my God, our God. They said, God, it's impossible. God is possible. All things are possible. All things, all things, all things, all things. I mean, can you imagine if you was in a debt situation and $20,000 formulated in your purse? That's all things. <laughs> I'm just giving you an example. Because I think, I, I, I think that there's a mental block that stops a lot of people from receiving their blessing. Because you just don't believe hard enough. You don't believe in that very thing. You're trying to figure out how it's going to happen when you should just be worrying about being in the right place when it happens. I know that because that's how I was. I was, I was all, man, how is this going to happen? God, you said this. I don't see any signs. This is, like, show me something. Give me a little piece so I know I'm on the right track. No, this is what I told you. Are you going to believe it or not? That's the God we serve. He's a man. He's not a man that he shall lie. So here I go. Uh, the guy that was in front of me, he comes back. Coach is like, all right, he's back. The guy, uh, my friend, who uh, white uh, girlfriend had the baby, he's back. I'm still working out with the first team, and I'm just looking over my shoulder like, <laughs> I'm trying not to get too happy because the one day they're going to tap me and tell me, all right, thank you, you know, these guys are back. Never happened. Never happened. Never happened. I ended up starting in the bowl game, the biggest game of the year. I was a starter after three years of not even touching the field. You can't tell me that's not God, because these are people who didn't even believe in me. They told me I wasn't good enough. They told me I wasn't good enough. And before I went on the field, my D coordinator at the time, he was one of the main guys that was, like, really tough on me, man. He was, like, on me every day. And I'm like, who is this dude? Like, does he quit? Resist the devil or he shall flee. He's not fleeing. What kind of devil is this? <laughs> what kind of devil is this? So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, okay. He comes to me and says, OB, we're all proud of all the hard work you're doing. And I want you to know, if you don't play well in this game, you'll never see the field again. Whoa. Talking about pressure. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I'm just happy to be out there. Now you're telling me if I don't play well, I'll never see the field again. I got two years left. I don't think so. I don't think so. So I ended up getting like seven or eight tackles, had a really big play in that game, came back. Um, they got a new uh, defensive line coach. I got a new coach. And this guy changed my life. This guy changed my life. He changed my thinking. He changed my mindset. He changed my goals and my understanding. I got a lot to love for him, like a father figure. I really do. He... Uh, he came to me and uh, he was like, OB, I don't care whatever happened before I got here. This is a fresh slate with me. So I was like, wow. You know, so I know it was something going on, something that I have no clue about. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, OK, I'm going to do everything right. Everything he asked me to do, it, I'm going to do it exactly how he tells me to do it. I had some guys, oh, you the coach's pet. I'm like, yeah, OK, cool, because whenever Goodness and greatness and favor comes. It's going to come my way because I'm just being faithful. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I'm sitting there and, uh, man, he just coaches me up, man. He really took the time out to show me how to do things the right way. So uh, my, my, my junior year in college, I had five sacks, eight tackles behind the line of scrimmage, which was a solid year. And he told me uh, going into my senior year, he brought me in his office and said, OB, 
uh, had some scouts visit with me. Uh, you're about a sixth or seventh round pick right now, maybe a free agent. But I believe you can be a first round pick. I'm like, okay. He was like, but I got a challenge for you. And I'm like, okay. Lay it on me, coach. He says, you have eight months left in college. So you have eight months for the rest of your life. What are you willing to do for these next eight months for the rest of your life? To be well off, to live your dream, to have a shot. I'm like, wow, no one's ever said that to me. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? What are you going to work harder at each day? He said, every single day matters. We only take steps forward. There's no steps back. So I'm like, wow, that's deep, you know? Spiritually, it makes you think that taking steps forward when you're following God, and even when you mess up or you slip up, God is still right there and he's just holding you right here. He's holding you right here in the same situation. Because I can't say you take steps back because when you come back to God, he blesses you. <laughs> he blesses you. So here I am going into my senior year. You know, uh, usually we got at, like after, uh, what do you call it, finals. At the finals, we take two and a half weeks off. You get to go home and see your family. Then you have to be back for summer school because we took the least amount of credits because we, we were athletes. So you had to go to summer school to be on course with all the other students. So instead of going home, I was like, I'm here. I'm in the weight room. I'm training. I'm watching film. Like, I'm reprioritizing my life. I'm changing my friends. I am changing my study habits. I'm changing my mindset because this is my opportunity to live my dream. This is my opportunity. This is something that God told me way back. And it's something that I spoke since I was six years old and I continually speak it and spoke it. So, boom, going into my senior year, have an amazing senior year. I went from five sacks to 15 sacks. I went from eight TFLs to 25 TFLs to lead the nation. Now, the whole time I'm sitting here, I'm like, every day in practice, it's all these NFL scouts coming, and I'm like getting all excited, because I'm like, man, it's almost there, like it's happening. It's happening, like thank you, God. You know, protect me from injury. That was my biggest prayer, I was like, man, Things are going so good right now. I don't want nobody to run into me. My own teammates. I'm, I'm real cautious. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, don't be too rough. We just practice. It's practice. This is practice. This is practice. Summer down. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, God, show me the way. You know, what else do I need to do? So I'm coming out of school. Um, after I finish my senior year, um, once again, the NFL looked at me and was like, okay, you're kind of undersized for this position. We want to see if you can play linebacker. And I'm like, great, not again. Like, I don't want to play linebacker, you know? And I uh, ended up getting invited to the second best all-star game, which was the East-West Shrine. I went there, and uh, the first three days, I struggled. Like, I didn't understand coverages. I didn't understand. I'm like, I don't know what to do. God. What do I do? You're not going to put me out here to embarrass me and, and leave me here looking crazy. Like after the, after the hard work and the year that I put in, this is not it. God said, go talk to your coach. Ask him to stay with you and work with you. So I talked to the coach. After the meetings when everybody else left, I stayed another hour. Studied film. Had him break down everything for me. Took notes. Studied. Got to game day. Ten tackles. Interception. Defensive MVP at a position that I didn't even play. So I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know, God, again, showing up. Showing up for me. So then I got invited to um, the Senior Bowl, which is uh, the biggest bowl game. That's where all the NFL scouts are, the head coaches, the GMs. They're like, this is the Dundada. This is it. This is what you work for right here. So I go in there, confidence on high, because I'm like, God, you got me. Like, like, there's nothing that can bring me down now, you know? And um, first practice, going through drills, I can hear him, man, he looks amazing, he looks fast, he's, he's this, he's that. I'm going through my pass rushing drills, went to do a spin move, boom, ACL, blew my knee out. 
blew my knee out. I blew my knee out. I blew my knee out. And I remember it to this day. It was like slow motion. I can hear it. You know, I can see my surroundings. And all I could do was cry. I mean, I haven't cried like that. And I mean, I cried because I felt like it's over. <laughs> Like, my opportunity is just, like, it went down the drain, you know? It was like, God, like, how are you going to help me from here? And um, I didn't call my mom first because I knew my mom was going to be historical. So I'm like, I got to call my youth pastor. I need strength before I can talk to anybody. So I called him, and I'm crying, and he's like, shut up. I'm like, Sh <laughs> like shut up. <laughs> he was like, don't you believe in the things that God has spoken over your life? He was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, so what's the difference now that you got a little trouble? Are you going to just give up? And I was like, no, no. He was like, okay. He said, uh, you, need to, you need to stay in a positive place, stay around positive people. So after I tell my ACL, of course, it's the biggest thing down there. You know, you don't get hurt in a, an all-star game. It just So I get hurt. It's going across the ESPN ticketer. I got all these media people calling me, emailing me, want to do an interview, want to hear my story. Uh, you know, I got the critics. Oh, man, he was projected first round. Now he's going to be, you know, he might not get drafted, might not get a shot. Um, his dream might be over. You know, with a Schofield stand a chance, will there be a team to give Schofield a chance? And I'm like, wow, this is awful. You guys are just praising me last week <laughs> you know it's like okay okay well god what do i do i got rid of and i won't i won't say got rid of but i separated myself from all negativity from all people that doubted me people that showed too much sympathy i wanted people that was going to push me that believed in me that wouldn't take me being down you know and once again, here I am, me and God. Nothing else matters. It don't matter what anyone says now. My ACL's torn. This is, what's, this is what it is. It's torn. Only person that can bless me and put me in a good situation is God. So I'm, I'm sitting there like, okay, God, uh, what else do I do? You know, uh, I believe you're going to heal me. I believe I'm going to have a chance. But what do I do? Go back and start studying. I'm like, studying? I know everything. You know, I've been, been, I had a great study. Studying, I'm studying, I'm studying football, I'm watching film. Not, I didn't know that at the combine they, you have interviews. So it's like a panel interview where you're sitting in the chair, you have the head coach, you have the GM, you have all the coaches, all the people in the organization sitting in this room around you and you're just in the chair. <laughs> and they're like shooting questions at you, you know, trying to catch you up, trying to see, you know, where you're at mentally, see what you know about your film, you know, and their biggest thing was, how do you plan to come back? What's your mindset? Do you believe you can come back? Do you think you're going to be stronger? Are you going to play this year? Because, you know, if, if we were to draft you, you know, you wouldn't play this year. We'd just hold you out. And I was like, well, I'm going to play this year. I just need an opportunity. And I, I impressed these GMs and these coaches with my attitude, my drive, my faith, my charisma, because – when it came to draft day, after everyone said that I wouldn't get drafted, I wouldn't get an opportunity, I just refused to believe it, man. I, I, I just, you ever, you ever know how good God is that when he tells you something, you refuse to believe otherwise, regardless of your situation? It's no way this can happen to me because God said this. I'm watching people getting drafted left and right. And this was the first year that they made the draft three days. So I'm sitting here like, gosh, I got to wait three days to find out if I'm going to play the NFL. I'm sitting there like, God, this is tough, like, watching this. Like, these are guys that I competed with. These are guys I, I mean, I dominated these guys. And they're going first round and getting these big paydays. Like, this is supposed to be me. This is, this is supposed to be me. So I get a call from Coach Carroll from the Seattle Seahawks. He's like, OB, I just saw your film. We are so excited over here. We're going to find a way to draft you. But because of your injury, you know, we might, we might not be able to get you to like the fifth or sixth round. I'm like, you know, OK. I mean, that's something positive to hear that, I, you know, at least to get drafted. About five minutes later, I get a call from Rod Graves um, from the Arizona Cardinals. And I got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals fourth round. 
Yes. Yes. All God. All God. I got drafted fourth round with a torn ACL. There's guys that are 100% healthy and don't get drafted. Is that a conspiracy? Is that fate? Because last I checked, they told me that I wasn't good enough. That they wanted me to transfer. But God said, you made my name big in the church. I'm going to make your name big on the stage. For me, it was one of the most inspiring things that occurred in my life. Because regardless of the decisions I made, the mistakes I made, God still blessed me. He still gave me the desires of my heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you all the desires of your heart. Gosh. And it's just touching to me because it's like ministering to myself. It's like these things really happen. I mean, it sounds like a good story, but I really lived it. I had to deal with people doubting me and telling me I'm not good enough all the time. Every, every level that I've reached, it's, it's been that way. I've been the underdog. I've been the guy that I feel like they don't respect me. They don't treat me right. Who do they think I am? Do they not know with one opportunity that I will take over because of God I serve? Because the words that I speak? I'm talking about radical faith. Radical faith. And there's been times where I'm like, man, like, how, God? Like, why is this happening? How could, how could I be in this situation? I've done everything you've asked of me. I didn't disrespect anybody. I'm not getting in any trouble. I'm not doing all these crazy things that you see in the media. Like, I'm a respectable man of God. I'm an NFL athlete that serves the Lord. And I'm like, what else do I have to go through? <laughs> so, um, after I got drafted by the Cardinals, they looked at my knee surgery like, oh, man, you got to get a second surgery. So I had to get a second knee surgery. And I'm like, man, this is really going to set me back. I said that I was playing this year. So I get a second surgery. They're going to try to keep me out. You know, I'm like, okay. You know, God, it's all you. So I have uh, old school anointing oil. <laughs> anointing oil. Bless oil. Every day before rehab, before my workouts, I anointed my knee. I plead the blood of Jesus. I declare healing. And 10 weeks into the season, I make my debut as an Arizona Cardinal. I play. God is so good. And I'm just, man, I'm just trying to fit in. I'm trying to do whatever I can because I'm like, man, they gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. They don't even know what they just did. They don't even know what type of player they have. I hope they utilize me correctly. That's all I'm saying. So, I mean, I'm playing on special teams. I'm forcing fumbles. I'm making all these plays. I'm like, man, like, this is, a, this is, like, this is unreal. Like, I'm living a dream right now. It doesn't even feel like I'm here, <laughs> you know? It's like, Wow. So I'm sitting there, I'm just thanking God like for everything. And next thing I know, last two games of the season, two of the guys in front of me got hurt. At the time, it was Joey Porter and Clark Higgins. And uh, I ended up starting the last two games, and I got two sacks. I'm like, yes, you know, show them a little bit of something. Going into next year, like, I'm going to be ready. Then the NFL lockout happens, and I'm like, great. I can't be at work. And I'm, I'm playing linebacker, and I, I've never really played it. I don't have experience. So we get a brand new D coordinator. Like, I'm sitting here, like, trying to figure out what in the world am I going to do with my life. I've never had this much money in my bank account. I'm uh, 23 years old. At the time, I didn't have any children. I'm like, okay, party time. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, you know. Uh, being in college, it was like summer, summer camp, you know, fall camp, the season, finals, bowl game. Christmas break, winter conditioning, spring ball, finals, back to summer school, summer conditioning. For five years, that's been my schedule. 
And before that, I was in high school, so it was consistently something. This is the first time in my life where I got done. It's like I have nothing to do. I didn't know what to do. That was bad. Because, I, I mean, I, I did all type of stuff. Party, traveled. Uh, I mean, I blew lots of money my first year. I had to learn. I had to learn. And it was, it was I mean, it was, it was tough. It was tough because I was just trying to live the life that I saw the older guys living, you know? Like, that was my example. I mean, I still at the time didn't have a great relationship with my father, so I'm just trying to find my own way. My being a man was what I saw on TV, heard in rap music, saw in music videos, watched other, other friends do. So it was like, I didn't, really, I didn't really grasp the concept, that maturity factor that I needed. So um, after the lockout, I'm like, I'm completely broke. I have no money. I'm completely broke. And this is, this is when I met my beautiful wife. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> I'm broke. I'm like, great. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even take her to dinner. Baby, we are, we are eating in tonight, tomorrow, the night after that. Uh, I mean, I... I'm making a joke out of it, but she'll tell you. I mean, it was, I don't know if it was my birthday. Something was going on where she wanted to treat me. She said, you can go eat wherever you wanted to go. Eat at. I mean, I used to go to some restaurants where it was like $300 a night, you know, for, for a plate. And I'm like, okay. Well, I felt so bad. I mean, I'm like, I'm broke. I'm like, man, let's go to Chili's. You know, I ain't trying to make you spend a lot of money because you start asking me about my money. <laughs> I'm hurting right now. <laughs> I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I'm hurting, baby. I'm hurting. But you know what? My wife has a prayer life. She has an awesome relationship with God. And I'm telling you, thank you, God, for her. I know for a fact, I know for a fact that she prayed some prayers that got me out of a lot of tough situations. She prayed some prayers that strengthened me, that encouraged me, that pushed me, that drove me to be the man I am today. That's a, that's a virtuous woman, a virtuous woman. So I come back after the lockout, and I'm like motivated because I'm like, I don't got no money, and I got to get paid. <laughs> I got to get paid, man. I got to make sure I do this the right way this time because I can't play those games. I can't even tell my mom about this. She's going to kill me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I'm like, okay. I go into, um, I go into the preseason, and uh, – at the time, Coach Wisenhunt was the head coach, and he came to me and was like, OB, um, uh, you know, you're progressing, but we need you to move faster. And I'm like, shoot, I didn't even get an off season to work. You know, like, he's like, we just need you to bring it, on, bring it on home some more. I'm like, OK, great. So I go back to what I know best, talking to God. God, what to do? How do I handle the situation? My wife, um, at the time, because I mean, two years, I had two D coordinators. I had to learn a brand new defense. And I mean, our playbooks are about as thick as this, this box right here. And I'm sitting there like, God, help me. I have never read this many plays in my life. There's so many variations. What do I do? So my wife makes me flashcards. <laughs> and we're going through these flashcards, man. We're going through these flashcards every day. I got sick of those flashcards. We're going to dinner, flashcards. We're going to run errands, flashcards. In the car, she's asking me questions left and right. Oh, babe, how was your day? Yeah. Okay, so what do you do when uh, over me? <laughs> I'm like, great. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. You know, like, ah. Uh. <laughs> but, I mean, that's her, you know. She was an athlete, too, and she has that competitive spirit, so she definitely wasn't taking any slack from me, so I had to... I had to make sure I was on board. But, I, I mean, I learned the defense, competed well. Uh, I was still backing up Joey Porter. And once again, injury. Injury, injury. Second preseason game, we're playing the Green Bay Packers. And, uh, man, I, I make a move. I got, like, two sacks in the game. And the way I came down on my shoulder, I tore my labrum in my left shoulder. And I'm like, great. Great, 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 great. I'm asking uh, Doc, is this something that's going to end my season? You know, is this something that's going to, 
you know, hold me out for a while. He said, well, a lot of baseball players get this injury and they're still able to play. I was like, well, this is football. You know what I mean? Like, we're hitting. <laughs> so what do I do, you know? He's like, well, you know, you can rehab it. We can get your MRI and see if you need uh, surgery. And I was like, okay, rehab. Like, I don't want to look at the MRI. Like, my faith needs to be in a, my mind needs to be in a good place. So I'm rehabbing my shoulder. Um, I'm wearing a shoulder harness. Cool, I'm playing. Like, I got to the point where, I mean, during, during, during games, I mean, I'm full-fledged. My prayer is, God, if there's anything in me that's not of you, take it away from me now. Because football is a dangerous sport. I mean, you, you, you never know. And I want to make sure that everything that I do on that field is not glorifying me. It's glorifying God because he put me there. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, uh, you know, God, uh, what do I do now? Back to the anointing oil. Anointing my shoulder, anointing my knee, anointing my head. Let's go. Let's go to work. Week seven. We're playing the Seattle Seahawks. I'm running to make a tackle. An offensive lineman come out of nowhere, cut me. I'm trying not to land on my teammate. I fall on my other shoulder. I tore my rotator's cuff in this shoulder. And I'm sitting here like, God, is the devil trying to break me down? Something's good is going to happen because this is, this is unreal. <laughs> this, is, this is unreal. Once again, um, you know, same thing. You can get an MRI or you can try to rehab it. Rehab. I'm not getting an MRI. There's nothing you're going to do to take me off this field because I fought too hard to believe to be here. I went through too much. So many people that tried to keep me from this point in my life, from my high school teacher that was trying to fail me, from my coach that asked me to transfer, so that they didn't want to give me a shot to play in the games from tearing my ACL before the draft and still got drafted. And you're going to tell me that I'm not going to play this week? I don't think so. I'm playing. So here I am looking like the goofy guy. I got two shoulder harnesses on. <laughs> but I'm playing, man. I'm playing my butt off. I'm playing my butt off. And everything was, was, was to God. I mean, I'm talking at that point, I knew it wasn't me. I knew it wasn't me. I was like, there's a difference in the player O'Brien Schofield without God and the player O'Brien Schofield with God. It's so much easier. Even though I go through a little pain, a little nicks, a little bruises, a little political challenges, God has the last word. <laughs> God has the last word. God has the last word. And God told me, you made my name big in the church, I'm going to make your name big. Still holding on to it. So, boom. I have a good year. Uh, ended up beating out Joey Porter for the starting spot with two messed up shoulders. Uh, and I went into my third year with a different mindset. Like, my off season was different. I was training. I was studying. Everything was geared towards football. I'm like, this is my year. Like, I'm not going to do anything to mess this up. And I came out, I'm talking about, whew, fired up. I was ready. I was looking at my at my time, uh, my fiance, my wife. She's my fiance, and um, I was about to be a father, about to have a little boy, which y'all are probably sitting here praising, worshiping all the time in the front row. It changed my mindset. I'm not doing this for me anymore. I'm about to be a father, something that I felt like I didn't have in my life. I got to man up now. I don't care what I go through. It's for my family. Every time I work out, the mornings, I don't feel like getting out of bed when I'm sore, when the media talking bad about me, when all these different things are going on. I have to sit here and have faith and look at my wife and my kids and say, I'm doing this for you. Any man in here know that. I mean, you work for your family. That's what a man's supposed to do. Supposed to work. 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 The Bible says a man that doesn't work doesn't eat. I think everybody likes eating. <laughs> so here I go I go into my third year oh, having a great year man I'm, it's like week six I got five sacks I got like 35 tackles you know they're talking in the organization about possibly if I, if I continue at this rate 
extending my contract. So getting a new contract. And I still had a year left. So I'm like, ooh, yeah, you know, ah, thank you, guy. Like, it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. My dream is happening. <sighs> Once again, Green Bay, week nine. About to sack Aaron Rodgers. And uh, one of my teammates came out of nowhere, tried to beat me to the sack, landed on my ankle. Mm. Season over with. And this is a crazy part. The week before that, my dad called me. He was real bothered. He's like, son, I just want to make sure you're okay. I had this really bad dream that you got hurt in the end of your season, but it didn't end your career. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm playing so well with this. I'm like, dad, uh, don't, don't speak that. Like, I'm going to be okay. You know, I pray over my body. Like, I'm good. And then when it happened, it was like, wow. I was like, now what, guy? Like, this is three years in a row. You know, this is, but this is keeping me out. And in the NFL, if you can't stay healthy, you can't be there. They need guys that are reliable and that are durable. So I'm sitting there like, okay, what next? Because every time I got hurt, God did something miraculous in my personal life, in my spiritual life. So I said, okay, uh, <laughs> this is going to be funny, but here I go. Um, they tell me I'm out for the season and that I'm going to be on crutches for 10 weeks. Uh, I got a cast on, and uh, I made it about two days with crutches. And I was like, you know what, babe? There's no way I'm doing this for two weeks. So I went to Costco and got a hover round. <laughs> 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 and I'm hovering everywhere, in the mall, Walmart. I'm, I'm racing down. I, I mean, I'm enjoying this thing. She'll tell you, I was enjoying it. This is, this is my goat cart right here around my house. So I'm using this hover round, man, and it's, 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 it's the most amazing thing, you know, because I'm like, you see these commercials and you want to know, is it, you know, does it really work? You know, and being a younger guy using that, it's like, I need an endorsement, you know, <laughs> look out for me on this. So um, I ended up going to my wife's aunt's um, nursing home. She's in a nursing home and we was just going to see her and they, and they found out I was coming and oh man, they made a big deal about it. So they bringing all these things for me to sign. And what made them even more happy was when I rolled in there with a hover out. <laughs> You'll be surprised. <laughs> You'll be surprised, man. God works in mysterious ways. He made me uh, very approachable and, and, and reachable to these people. And uh, it really blessed me, man, just to, to be there. And just encouraging words. I mean, these people are in their 80s and their 70s, you know, dealing with different sicknesses, and they don't have their family around them all the time. And for them to just encourage me, you know, and I mean, that's wisdom there. This is 70, 80 years of wisdom encouraging me. I'm like, man, you probably don't know exactly what I'm going through, but the fact that you're taking your time out to uplift me and say you're going to pray for me and do all these things, I'm like, God, how can I give up? I got, I got people believing in me, you know? So, uh, Cardinal struggle after I got hurt. Uh, ended up firing all the coaches, which you guys know. Fired all the coaches, brought in, um, brought in a new coach. And, um, man, that was a tough situation for me in itself because uh, it didn't go – it was kind of like college, you know, the personal attacks, uh, kind of saying stuff to, to make me react, to give them a reason to cut me. And I'm talking about, this is just last year, this time. My wife would tell you, I used to come home in tears someday, like, ugh, I'm about to punch somebody in the face. I can't take this anymore. Like, I'm a man before anything. You know what I mean? And it's like, uh, they're attacking me. Like, it's, it's obvious. And everyone's like, oh, nah, nah. I mean, don't. <laughs> you're, you're looking into things. I'm telling my agent, like, look, you need to talk to him. You need to find out what's going on because... The same it, the same the environment that I can be in. Like, I know when I'm wanted. I'm not wanted right now, and I feel it. It was thick. So, they made me report with the rookies, and I'm a fourth year guy. So, I'm like, we got to report to camp with the rookies? Are you kidding me? Okay, whatever. Go to camp, do what I have to do. Then, the day everybody reports, the day before that, my agent calls one of the guys in the head office and say, uh, I just want to talk to you about OB because 
you know, he feels that there's some personal attacks going on. And it's like, oh, oh, well, we're sorry. You know, we're just trying to create competition. We want to create competition. And we have big plans for OB. Like, tell him whatever he, he thinks. You know, it's not that. Like, we'll apologize. OK. I could deal with that. So at least I know what it is. I go in to uh, report to camp with the rest of the team, the veterans. And I notice I got a roommate. I'm like, I got a roommate in camp? I'm a four-year guy. This is unreal. OK, they're really challenging me this time, huh? OK. Go in and have lunch with all my teammates. Go in the locker room. I'm in the locker room for about an hour. We have what they did here was a conditioning test. They made you condition, like run uh, 300 yard shuttles to tell if you was in shape to compete in camp. So I'm walking out to the conditioning test. All of the media is right here. All my teammates right here on the field warming up. I'm walking out. The guy says, OB, uh, let, me, let me talk to you for a second. So I'm thinking he's going to reiterate what my agent talked to him about. He goes, uh, man. I hate to have to do this, um, but we're going to have to release you today. We're going to have to cut you today. Wow. Talking about swallowing pride. Talking about becoming a man. Whew. I had to hold in a tear. That was a tearjerker right there. This is my dream. This is something I fought so hard for. This is something God told me a long time ago that you made my name big in the church. I'm going to make your name big on the stage. I said, okay. Well, you know what? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, appreciate everything. I didn't talk to any head coach, no GM, didn't ask for my playbook, didn't give me a ride back to the hotel. It was the dirtiest way you can do somebody. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Now what, God? What do you have for me next? My dad calls me. He's like, really upset that I got cut and I'm like uh, it is what it is you know I'm gonna get another opportunity I just gotta train and, and you know and, and, and keep my faith in God my, my massage therapist used to attend church here and she kept inviting me to church and I'm like I'm gonna come I'm gonna come you know I got all these things going on but I'm gonna make it so I ended up coming for Easter service last year and I walked in here and I was blown away <laughs> I'm like, whoa, there's people in here with tattoos and jerseys on and <laughs> polos. I'm like, I can, I, I can do this, you know, just with the crowd. But I mean, I still didn't know what to, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was sitting right over here. I was sitting right over here. And um, when praise and worship started, and when you guys started to open up your mouths and worship God, I was overwhelmed with the spirit. And I was like, this is home. This is where I will serve while I'm in Phoenix. This is where I will serve when I come back. You guys inspired me because, quote unquote, stereotypes of Christians, they have an idea of how you look. When I came in here, I was like, wow, these people love the Lord. They're on fire. Like the spirit is in here. People are getting saved every week. I'm like, wow, like, like this, this is unreal. Talking to the, the, the ushers and just watching how people operate in this church, I was like, these people are serving God. They love God. And this is what I need to connect myself to. And just meeting Pastor Gus, man, he's just been a blessing to my family and to me. It's been a blessing. Been a blessing. So um, I had went back home to uh, my brother plays basketball in uh, Chicago. I mean, he's bigger than me. He's 6'6", 240. He's going to be a, uh, a senior. And uh, me, and my, me and my wife, we, we go back to, to support him, watch some of his games. And uh, right now I'm without a job. I have no job. And uh, my dad is there. And I really wasn't feeling him at the time. You know, I can't, I can't talk to him right now. And he's like, come on, let me talk to you. I'm like, nope. I can't do it right now. I'm here to see my brother. Like, we'll, we'll pick another time to talk. You know, in my whole life, I, I was fearful of my father just because of the rage, the anger, the military in him. So, you know, this was my, my man moment 
<laughs> when I stood up to my father, you know, I was like, I was still kind of scared, like, oh, this dude is comeback training. I got to be ready. <laughs> my wife is here. It's going to be a fight to the death. <laughs> so, uh, so um, you know, he brings me out in the hallway and he's like, it's like, why are, you, why are you not answering my calls? Why are you ignoring me? This is hurting me. I said, hurting you? I said, you don't even know me. I'm your child. You was in the house. You was in the home, but you don't even know me. What you mean? What's my favorite color? Couldn't even tell me. I'm 24 years old, 25 years old. You don't know my favorite color? I'm your son. What's my, what, what, where do I like to go eat at? What are some things I like to do? Nothing. And that ate him up. And then I stopped talking to him for a while, just let it go and just, God, help me. You know, this, this is something that's bothering me. My, my relationship with my father, I'm about to be a father and I have no clue what to do. I'm winging this thing. <laughs> you know, I'm like, show me. So uh, my dad um, ended up going back to uh, Chicago and my dad, you know, me and him had a conversation and like my dad, like cried, you know. He apologized to me and told me, you know, I was young. I didn't. I was still trying to live my life. You know, I had all these things going on. I didn't understand. I mean, you're my firstborn. I was trying to figure things out myself. And like, I didn't even care about the explanation. The fact that he said he was sorry was good enough. You know, yeah. it's good enough. <laughs> it's good enough. And I mean, I forgave him right away. You know, it was. But don't worry about it. You know, as our relationship grows, we still talk about certain things, and I still get healed from certain things. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't want it all right then. Just like you saying sorry is letting me know you love me enough. You want to work something out. Let's let's work it out. You know, and it got to the point. I was talking to my father almost every day. Man, it was it was it was unreal. And I was like, I felt complete. You know, I felt whole. And I'm not even thinking like I don't have a job right now. You know, like. Complete. I'm whole. I'm okay. Everything's good. <sighs> Three days from me getting cut, I'm still available. And all these teams are like, uh, well, Brian Schofield is a really good player. Why he could just get cut beginning of camp? Like, what's going on? So basically, the way they operate in free agency, they go in the draft order. So whoever was the first pick in the draft, they get a chance to say, oh, do we want this guy or not? So Seattle, I believe, was 26, okay, in the draft order. So that means 25 teams passed up on me, okay, being a free agent. And uh, Pastor Gus will tell you, we had many talks, you know, and he, he told me, he told me, he was like, uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Do what you know is right. And that's all I could do. I get, uh, I get a phone call from Coach Carroll. Hey, we want you to be a Seahawk. We're so excited to have you. I walk in there. I'm like, whoa. I call my wife like, babe, this feels like a championship in here. Something's weird going on. <laughs> Something weird is going on. And um, so I had to, you know, whenever you get drafted, traded, you have to do a physical. So I did a team physical, and they looked at my knee that I injured first coming into the NFL, and they looked at it like, ah, man, we're not going to be able to pass you on your physical. They said, uh. In a couple of years, you're going to be bone on bone on the inside of your knee. And, you know, we don't know if we're willing to take a risk. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, God, you didn't bring me all the way here to leave me right now. I said, you didn't bring me here to embarrass me because this is an opportunity. So I'm sitting there and... I'm talking about I'm in this hotel room for about 14 hours because I was there early in the morning. I'm in the room about 14 hours, and my agent and the GM is going back and forth, trying to work out a contract, trying to work out a deal, you know, protect them from just in case I was to get injured. You know, my wife's praying, my mom's praying, the church is praying, Pastor Gus praying. I'm like, God, it's going to happen, you know. And uh, they didn't. The thing is, they didn't want to pay me my contract. Okay, they didn't want to pay me my contract. They was trying to, you know, give me less money. And uh, my agent was like, look, man, this is a joke. 
I'm about to uh, just throw a crazy number out there. He said, I know they're not going to take it because it's more than what we was what they would have had to pay me in the first place. It was two times more, actually, double. So he's like, uh, I'm just going to throw this out there, see what they say. You know, they already, you know, acting crazy. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Get a phone call back. Congratulations. You are a Seattle Seahawk getting paid double the salary. One year. My God. My God. Faith. Faith. Active faith. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, God. Man, I thank you. So whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it. I go there, and I'm just amazed at this talent. I'm like, God, oh, this is serious. This is not the same way we were doing things in Arizona. I have to, I have to learn how to practice here. I got to learn how to compete. So I still had to make the team. You know, even you can sign a contract and still get cut in football. It's not guaranteed. So I ended up making the team, started the first two games, got a sack. I was playing really well. And then some guys came back from injury and some suspensions. And that pushes me back on the bench. And I'm like, what do I have to do? You know, it was frustrating. I mean, my wife would tell you it was frustrating. I'm like, what do I have to do? I'm doing everything I'm right. I'm practicing hard. I'm taking care of my body. Like, I know the defense. I'm playing every position they're asking me to play. What do I have to do? Last year, there were two games that I didn't dress, and that was the first time that, like, happened in my career. That's like, OB, you know, we need some extra players at this position, so you're not going to dress this week. And that was, like, kind of tough. I mean, it didn't, it didn't affect your pay, but this is something I love to do. And I'm like, I'm not going to leave this door open for you guys to keep telling me I'm not going to dress. <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting there. I'm just like, God, just what, what to do? And my wife is like, look. You got to see the big picture. You don't see the big picture. You're just looking at it right now. You're all mad and worked up. She said, the big picture is that you're going to the Super Bowl. This is my wife now. and she's, she, <laughs> she was pregnant at the time with our, our second son, and her due date was right around the Super Bowl. So she's sitting there like, oh, I'm already making plans with my doctor. We're going to the Super Bowl. So you just need to be ready. It's a long season. Be prepared when the opportunity comes. All right, so I'm just like, all right, cool. Got to the point where it just wasn't bothering me anymore. It's like, whatever. This is a blessing that I'm even here. Like, I was the one even wanted to give me a shot. They gave me opportunity. I'm going to do what I have to do. Serve. Whatever I got to do. If I got to play DN, if I got to play linebacker, if I got to just do practice squad, if I got to do special teams, whatever you need me to do, just tell me, and it's going to get done. And that's been my attitude. That's been my attitude. So, I... uh. I mean, I started, I started playing really well in practice. Like, it just got to the point I was in great shape. Things was just coming easy. They'll put me in a little bit more in the games. And every time they put me in, I would make plays. Every time. Every time. It was just unreal. So it got to the point where I'm like, man, OK. You give me three plays, I make two plays. You know? And, and that's how it was. My production was, my production was sky high. So we get to the NFC Championship game. We're playing the 49ers, which nobody here likes. I hope not. <laughs> We're playing the 49ers, and they're like, OB, uh, man, uh, you won't be able to dress this game because we need an extra offensive tackle. I'm like, this is the game to go to the Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? OK. All right. Cool. I had to uh, pay for my, my therapist and stuff to come out and work on me because I thought I was playing in the game. So I'm like, I'll just waste this money. And, um, you know, I was just being a great teammate, man. I was encouraging guys because it was, it was an up and down game. I'm like, come on, we can do it. Just have faith, believe, touch and agree. Two or three guys in this name, God's in the midst. I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the sideline just going in, you know. I'm like, come on, God. You showed this team so much favor. Continue to show us favor. Boom, we make it to the Super Bowl. Oh. Most exciting thing ever. I mean, you're like it's sky high emotions, family, friends, teammates. I mean, it was a true brotherhood, something that I experienced there. But more so than anything, I've been playing football total my life, about 18, 19 years. And, I, and on this team, um, you know, every team you have, you say your uh, our father prayer, you know, before you go out. It's like tradition. Well, we had a prayer that wasn't tradition. It was just some praying brothers. 
I'm talking about praying brothers. We, we'll be in the locker room, whether it was a home game, whether it was a away game. We're going to shower. They'll pick and choose who's going to lead prayer. I'm talking about touching and agreeing. Hallelujahs. Thank you, Jesus. We receive it. We claim it. Pleading the blood. I don't know. These are football players. And, I, and this is what we've been doing the whole year. So I was like, man, this team is something different. I mean, I've been on teams and you have like five or six guys, you know, that stand strong. But I'm talking 80% of the team is in here. You know, it's like, wow. <laughs> wow. My God. So we win the NFC championship, going to the Super Bowl. We have two weeks to practice. We did all our hard work in Seattle. We got to the Super Bowl. It was just like, let's get it done. Like, we came this far. We're not losing. It's a mindset. It's a mindset, and that's something that's carried me my whole life is a mindset, and I'm encouraging you to have a mindset regardless of your situation. Don't give up. Don't accept defeat. Don't be around people that are downers. Stay around positive people. Stay in the church. Stay in your word. Man. Man. My God. I'm standing here before you saying God is awesome. He's a sovereign God. He's a faithful God. He's father. He's a father. When things are tough, when people doubt you, when the situation just looks like there's no way out, God said he would provide a way out, a way of escape in all situations. Oh. Man. So, I get to the uh, Super Bowl, and I'm just sitting here like, I don't know how to feel. I'm happy, but I'm like, are they going to let me play? You know, <laughs> are they going to tell me I can't dress? And uh, my family's here. Everybody's come from everywhere to see me. Uh, back at home in Chicago, they had, like, all these big watch parties, like, for me. And I'm just like, man, God, it would just be awesome just to – just to make a play, you know, just to be in the game, even if it's for two or three plays, to say I did it. I ended up playing 26 snaps out of 50. I played half the snaps in the Super Bowl. I was like, my God, my God. So I had a good year, man. I, I learned so much from my teammates, uh, just growing as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a man of God, just serving, constantly uh, talking to Pastor Gus. You guys' prayers, your intercessory for me, it's, it's been awesome. It's been amazing for my family. And um, I'm standing here today as a Super Bowl champion. God is so good. God is so good that he brought an underdog to become a champion. The guy everybody doubted. The guy they said they couldn't do it. Your dream is over. You won't get drafted. You should transfer. I'm going to fail you in this class. Who do you think you are? You're going too hard to a champion. This is, even, this is even more of a blessing. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. After the Super Bowl, my wife gave birth to our, um, our four-month-old son, Malachi. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, God, I'm a, I'm a free agent. I pray that I'm with a team that just gives me opportunity. Yes, it's about time I can get paid. Like, I'm ready to, I'm mature enough to be smart over my money. I've built a couple relationships. Like, I know how to do this thing now, God. Like, you, you've taught me. Even though I learned the hard way, you taught me, God. And, and I just thank you 
for your favor, for your blessings. And I got to the point where uh, my youth pastor always told me before I go into a store, before I go anywhere, pray for freebies, favor, <laughs> blessings, discounts. And I do that all the time, and there's always something happening. <laughs> I'm telling you, try it. Try it. Try it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. So I'm a free agent. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm negotiating contracts back and forth. And, uh, you know, I'll throw some numbers out there because God is good. It's not arrogance. Uh, so a couple teams wanted to pay me a mil and a half, two million for one season. And that's great. That's way more than what I was making before. And I'm like, God, like, this is, this is great. You know, yes, you know, this is happening. Out of the blue, New York Giants come, and they offer me two years, $8 million. Uh, two years, $8 million. Two million as soon as I sign my name on the contract. And I'm like, my knees are getting weak. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, if you allow this, like, man, there's so many things I want to do for your glory. Because my ultimate goal is once I'm done that I don't have to work. I want to work with the youth and, and put together programs and help out in the community. I really don't want to have to work. So that's why I work as hard as I do. I go up to New York. Oh, man, they wine and dine me. Limousine, great hotel, great dinners planned. I have to go do a physical. And his doctor looks at my knee, doesn't say anything. It's like, oh, okay. All right. What physical's done? I'm like, cool. I leave. I'm on my way uh, to the Giants facility to sign my contract. I'm about to walk in the door. My agent texts me and say, hey, you're not going to be able to sign today. I'm like, what? What's going on? said, uh, the doctor failed you on your physical. Wow. I'm like, okay. And I had to sit there and still go and meet the coaches and shake their hands and thank you for the opportunity because it was still an opportunity. Like, I appreciate the fact that you saw that much in me that you are going to invest that. So thank you, even though it didn't work out. So I was, I was I, mean, I, I mean, I called Pastor Gus that day, you know, and he encouraged me. You know, he was like, football is not over for you. God is showing me there's so much more he's going to do. You just need to wait on the Lord and do what you know is right. That's all he told me. So I'm like, okay. All right. And I got to this point, man, where I just got this joy. You know, I got this, I got this, I got this peace where I was like, well, football is over. I'm perfectly fine. Uh, I'm a champion. I'm doing something that only 48 other teams in the NFL has done. That's only 2,500 people in the world with the Super Bowl ring. That's crazy in the world. So I'm like, God, if this is it, I'm okay. I'm well off financially. I'm ready to serve. Whatever I need to do, just show me my, my next step, you know? So um, my mom's calling me. She's reading all the articles, <laughs> the ultimate sports mom. She's like, son, they're saying these things. Like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? I'm like, mom, not now. This is not the time for that. I just need you to know that I'm okay. That's it. And just trusting, trusting the Lord. He said, wait. And, uh, man, Pastor Gus preached a sermon, and it really hit me, you know, to understanding what waiting on the Lord was. You know, it's not standing still. And he said it, you know, it's not quitting your job. You know, if this is something I want to do, waiting on the Lord is doing what I know is right, which was still training, taking care of my body, coming to church. And I told him, I said, Pastor Gus, anything you need me to do, I'm here to serve. Anything. Uh, whatever. I, I, will, I will outreach. I want to do prison ministry. I said, whatever, just, I, I'm here, I'm here. You know, this is my home too, you know? And I'm sitting there like, God, I'm, I'm ready for whatever area you, you're going to elevate me in my life and whatever's next to come, let's, uh, let, let's do it. So Pastor Gus is like, he comes back to me like, look, 
It's not over. You have a long way to go. But God wants you to wait on him and do the right thing. I'm like, okay. I go back home to Chicago. My pastor says the exact same thing to me. And I'm like, wow. The Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Let everything be established. So I had faith. It was not over. It was not over. So I'm here. I'm serving. Praise and worship. I'm here. I mean, I love it. I love it here. I'm doing everything I can. I'm watching all these sermons on YouTube. Like, I can't get enough of God. I'm just overwhelmed with it. I'm sharing it with my wife. Like, baby, she probably was, like, aggravated with me because she was dealing with the kids. But I'm like, baby, you got to see this. Listen to what he said. Like, this is the word. I, I, I never understood it this way. Like, exciting. Exciting. Because football became a job. It was a job. I didn't get to fall in love with it because it was an escape. It was a way out of a bad situation. So God allowed me to be that little boy again, to just enjoy the game, to just enjoy life. I mean, I am very fortunate to be standing here, but I had to stand my ground. I had to stand my ground. And, I mean, I'm here serving. Like, I got to the point where my wife probably was, like, looking at me like, all right, you better stop saying that. But I was saying, like, I mean, if it's over, it's over. Like, I'm not even tripping. Like, I don't even care. You know, I'm just, I'm just here to serve. That's all I can say. That was my quote. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. Everything I can do, I'm here to serve. Charity events, whatever. Here, I'm here, I'm here. I just want to do it. Just want to do it. I get a call from Seattle. And they're like, um, OB, man, we, we, we really want you back. We just have a lot of guys we got to pay, you know. And I said, OK, well, you know, keep me, keep me informed what's going on. And uh, I mean, I, at the time, I had about five or six teams interested. And every time Seattle called me, it's like teams were dropping off. And I'm like, what is going on? Are they blackballing me? <laughs> you know, teams are dropping off left and right. and. Um, I've always, like I said, I've always been the non-confrontational guy, so I would just, like, go through the fire with stuff, you know? People would talk to me all type of way, and I'd just hold my tongue. But being a Christian doesn't mean being scared. It's about being bold and standing firm in what God told you and what you believe. There's no disrespect in being bold about the word of God. There's no disrespect in that. So, I, uh, I'm talking to the gym, and I'm like, look, man, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't care about the money right now. That's going to come. I need a fair opportunity to compete for a starting job. Nothing else matters. I'll make money. God's going to bless me. But I need to hear from you and from Coach Carroll that I have a fair opportunity. Oh, that's all? Yeah, 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 a fair opportunity, you know, come on back. And I'm like, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. I can't go through the same situation I went through last year. I have a family to support. I can't keep doing one-year deals. Like, I need to be on the field. You don't understand what type of player that you have. I said, the chip on my shoulder is so big because... For so long, I kept falling short. Every time I would get in that perfect situation, I fall short, I fall short, I fall short. And it was just God showing me that I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And God's not going to put you in a situation where you hurt yourself or make a fool of him either. So I'm like, okay, maturity, understanding, patience, joy, and speaking life into my situation. So I said, all right, listen, if you tell me that I have a fair opportunity to compete and start, I'm, I'll come back. All right, boom, have a fair opportunity to, cons to start. So here I am, a Seattle Seahawk once again, and God, yeah. God, the 
the almighty God, when doors seem to shut, he opened them. When doors seem to open, he closed them. The deals that weren't right, they just weren't right. Everything happens for a reason. And God doesn't make any mistakes. I've had ultimate victories in my life in the last year. Not only did I win the Super Bowl, I built and building a strong relationship with my father. Yes. My wife gave birth to our child. We had a healthy baby. Yeah. And at the beginning, I told you that I have three children, and um, I have a I have a daughter that uh, uh, she lives in St. Louis. And at the time, me and her mother were not getting along. She was she was my college girlfriend, and. Um, she just would not allow me to see my child. And it was tough. It ate me up. It ate me up because I didn't have, like I said, my father wasn't there. And I'm like, I can't let history repeat itself. I got to stop this. This is not going to be a curse in the Schofield family. So, a year ago, April, I'm in a child support battle. And before that, I mean, I did everything I could for my daughter. I, I gave my, my, uh, my daughter's mother money to make sure she was good, she can eat, she could. I mean, I basically was paying child support without paying child support legally. You know what I'm saying? I was taking care of my business as a man and as a father. And um, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for her. It was never enough. So she stopped letting me see my kid. I ended up having to go to court cases. And it just strung out, man. Strung out over these court cases. Like I'm spending all this money to have a 15-minute conversation with a lawyer. It's cost me $300. I'm like, this is crazy. I said, God, now I know I was in sin when I conceived that child. But I asked you for forgiveness. And it's in your hands. You know what that little girl needs. And you know that I'm going to be a great father. Work it out. Work it out. So my lawyer's sitting there telling me, like, oh, man, she's trying to get you for $3,500 a month. Like, all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, I said no. And we're at the court case. We're about to walk in. He's telling me this. And I was like, no. My wife was right there. I said, no. I said, you don't know the God I serve. I said, I ask for forgiveness. God knows that I'm not out here just making babies. Nothing is a mistake. That My daughter has a purpose as well. And I knew that God was going to put me in the best situation because he knew my heart. I did everything I could. I'm telling you I could. Everything I could. And uh, we're about to walk in the court case. And I said, look, you don't know the God that I serve. He's not going to do that to me. I said, I have favor. He starts laughing at me. She was right there. She was right there. My wife was right there. And I was like, okay, watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. You're going to see God show up today. So I get it. I, I mean, I, I go in the court room and uh, the judge recognizes me and was like, no, we're not going to do your case right here. They take me in an in the office. So I'm like, okay, this is a good start. <laughs> this is a good start. Um, her lawyer didn't show up. So they had a representative from Arizona. Um, they didn't ask for back child support because I was, I was taking care of my business. Um, she, she didn't like have my daughter in uh, daycare. So they didn't ask me to pay daycare. And all the crazy things that she was asking for, it was denied. It was completely denied. So, yes. So, 
here I am taking care of my daughter, still don't get to see her. Every time I call, she sleep. She's not here. I'm at work, like, and I'm like, this is awful. I set up appointments for Skype, nothing, just everything. So I said, all right, well, I'm just gonna leave it in God's hand now because you're playing around. You're playing around. So me and my wife sat down, put together some demands, of what we wanted, and uh, I had a court case on May 15th. And the judge looked at all these things that she was doing and all these crazy things she was asking for, and he was like, are you serious right now? This is a NFL athlete who's obviously been paying from day one, taking care of his business, and you're trying to make all these stipulations so he can't see his daughter. I would not allow that. I have joint custody of my daughter. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. She was just here uh, last Sunday through uh, Tuesday, and that's why I wasn't here. You know, uh, I got a chance to spend time with my daughter, and I mean, that was only my fourth fourth time seeing her since she was born. So you, you know you know it's been very hard. Um, but to hear her call me daddy, to see her build a relationship with my wife and my son in just those few days, God. <laughs> God. I am I am an open book because when you proclaim Jesus, people are trying to find dirt on you anyway. They want to find a way to bring you down and tell you who you're not and why you're not a Christian. So I just tell you all my dirt so you can see where God brought me from and you can see that I am a Christian. In my heart, I just want to encourage everybody in here, no matter how tough, how hard, how big of an obstacle, how big of a letdown, a death, a divorce, losing your job, financial struggles, debt, cancer, sickness, pain, Confusion, addictions. God died for all of that. Jesus laid his life down on the cross for all of that. We are conquerors. We are conquerors. I've learned so much just in failing. In failing of what not to do and how to do the right things. And I'm telling you, God is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He's the way. I don't know how to put in words sometimes my, my anxiety to just work hard and improve to God. I mean, I got to the point just this year in camp, it's just like every single play, it's like for you, God. Like the fact that I can run, the fact that I could walk, the fact that I'm in this situation, that I'm in this building, it's all because of you. Over and over, your track record is, you let me get right here. And it's like, go ahead and believe and I'll pull you back, or don't believe, and stay right there, because God's still going to protect you. But a lot of us, we don't, we don't believe completely, 100%. I'm challenging you to have active faith. I'm challenging you to put works in your faith. If you're believing for that promotion, if you're believing for that for your marriage to be mended, if you're believing for a runaway child to come back home, if you're believing for a financial breakthrough, healing in your body, they're telling me that I have arthritis in my knee, 
but I'm running around. I'm jumping. I'm playing. I signed an NFL contract. I'm standing up here saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Merciful God. Almighty God. The one that holds you when, when, it, when, when the going gets tough. When everyone's doubting you, when your family's not there, when you seem all alone, God is just saying, I'm here. And you know it's always that sweet voice, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Man. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. He wants to bring you out of your situation. There's been so many of you that's in here that's been praying for the same thing over and over, and God has it right here. It's right here. Just believe it. Put yourself in position to receive it. Receive it. You want a job promotion? Know everything you need to know about that job. You want a relationship with your child? Take time and build that relationship. Mend that relationship. If you want a healthy marriage, work on your marriage. Communicate. My God is good. My God, I have to say my God because it's personal. It, my God is good. He healed my body. He brought me out of financial problems. He gave me a beautiful wife, a family. Mended my relationship with my father. Gave me a huge part of my daughter's life. I'm a Super Bowl champion. I'm standing here today to tell you don't give up on God. Keep believing. Keep believing in God for the very thing you prayed for. If you think of faith as a mustard seed and how small a mustard seed is, he just needs something to get that fire started. Believe it. I was going to wear my jersey, but I don't want you guys to see me as an athlete tonight. I, I want you to see me as a man of God and someone that serves God. <laughs> my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. I'm going to end on this note. No situation is too big for God. No situation. No situation. There's no doubt in my mind that anything that I ask of God, it will be done. On his timing, but it will be done. I've been through too much. I've suffered consequences. I've had my war wounds. I've had my struggles. But God, when you can just say, but God. When people say you can't do it, but God. Ah, I got pain in my back, but God. There's something about when you call on the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, my God, talking about power, anointing, change of hearts, change of minds, direction, elevation, uplifting, healing your sorrow, healing your pain, discomfort, disbelief, doubt, addictions, troubles, my God, but God, my God, but God. But God, that's all you have to say now. When the situation looks so crazy, there's no way, there's no way this can, can work out. But God, nobody can do it. You're right. But God, but God, the Alpha and the Omega. Huh. Man, I feel it. Oh, my God, my God. It's just, it's, it's not enough, it's not enough for me to say thank you.
just thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're talking to a humble man. I might have jury on right now, but I'm not. Uh, I'm humble. God has brought me a long way. And a lot of these things are conversation pieces. <laughs> Make people want to come and talk to me. I'll talk all day. I'm sorry if I'm talking too long now. But God has been so good to me that I refuse to leave anything out and leave anybody leave here in doubt. Like you might have came here to see me and, and I'm going to tell you something. God has his hand on my life, your life, and he wants to elevate us. We're not supposed to go through struggles all the time. Yeah, they're going to be tough times, but when we walk by faith and not by sight, just take a moment, just take a moment, just take a moment and think of the last thing that God did for you. The last thing that you asked him for. God did it. Are you still serving him? Are you still praising him the same? Or did you put him on the shelf? Think of the last thing. How good God's been. God, get me out of this situation. If you don't get me out of this situation, I'm in trouble. I'm going to jail. I'm going to die. I'm going to get injured. How many times have God seen you out? Seen you through? Sent his angels to protect you? How many times as parents you prayed, God, just cover your child while they're out and about? And he's done it. They return home to you safe, sound. Think about the times you could have been dead. If you would have made that wrong decision. Oh, man, if you was at the club last night, got shot up, man. You, you were supposed to be there. Think about it. It's not a coincidence. It's not a conspiracy. It's not something told me. It's God just saying, hey, don't do that. I'm here. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Mm. He will see you through. Pastor Gus, thank you so much for allowing me to come. Oh, come on, somebody. This is, watch this. This wasn't. Remember what he said? Because I know what, listen, he came, when he came here in between, he is like, I'm here to, whatever, whatever. I just want to be, a, I just want to serve. I want to serve. And tell me, listen, he could have, you know, been, he could have just shared 20 minutes and said, oh, let's get the, you know, you know, that was a sincere, a sincere um, cry of his heart. Um, and I, I mean, I, was, I just told him, like, oh, I just got ministered to big time tonight. Amen. And um, this was priceless. I'm not just saying, listen, listen, this was priceless tonight. Amen. Because I know what I was talking to somebody else. I was, who was like, oh, Vernon, we're talking about, you know what we're talking about? We need to be more real and transparent. And it's sad because today we have a tendency to look down. Like we beat up the people, you know, because you said about failure, you know. And it's sad because it's because you're so transparent here today. You know how many people have been helped today because... I mean, throughout the Bible, how many people throughout the Bible, all the great ones, we're talking about David and Peter, that loved God, but failed and had moments, crazy moments. But we read their stories and we get encouraged. What's sad today is the church beats up on one another. We assume the worst right away instead of, uh, instead of building one another up and, and praying for one another. And today, what you did today by opening your heart, you could have just shared about, this. you could have just highlighted a couple stories here today. About how God showed up, you know, you know, healing your, you know, your leg that one time when you were younger, and and how you didn't give up, and 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 that's all real. But but you, but you yeah, Amen. I and mean, you can see the tears on on his eyes right here. I mean, people. Are, I mean, but but you you shared your heart, um, um, your life, um, family, um, personal things, and you know how many because of that, so many people have been encouraged. And I can I get an can I get a witness? Amen. Really. And he had his jersey on. He put it out on his jersey on today, earlier in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the office. He put on his jersey, and he took it off. And I wasn't sure. I, I, don't, I, I, was, I don't know if I was. I, I, I was looked. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, he just took it off, you know. And, and, and I love what he just said right now. And this is a man of God. Now watch this. I want to do something. I want to do something. 
and 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 and, and what we're gonna do is, and we'll we'll take a few minutes here, on, you know, for pictures, real, you know, as we, go, but we, and please be sensitive, and it's move quickly when we do that, okay? Because there's a lot of people here, and for some that are able to come here tomorrow. Please, maybe some of you can just come back tomorrow. You know what I mean? As far as that goes, just to get everybody else that might not be able to come here on Sunday. Now, what I want to do is, because you said so, all I can say is thank you. You know, just a, I can't even say enough thank yous. I want to just take a moment right now and just, Vernon, I want you to, because this the song that you sang a long time ago, and I want you to do it a cappella, and everyone just just, just, just listen. Just for a few minutes, we're going to have an altar call. We're going we're gonna to give everybody an opportunity to give their, because your miracle and your greatness starts with a, a relationship with Jesus. But before we do that right now, go ahead. Just sing it right there, right there. No one moving, no one moving, no one moving in the presence of God. This is a holy moment right now. This is a holy moment. If you're in this place right now, before we go any further, God loves you. God has a plan for your life. It's not the way you start. It is the way you finish. And if you're in this room and watching at home, there is still time to get it right. There is still time to get back up and move forward and be the champion that God's called you to be. God is not intimidated with your sins. He died for every one of your sins. The Bible says a righteous man falls up in times and he gets back. I'm speaking to some church people that have fallen away. Get back up. Today is your day. Tonight's your night. For others that have never given your heart to Jesus, your miracle, your turnaround, your breakthrough, your victory, your greatness, all of it starts with a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've heard tonight one thing all the way through, relationship, relationship, relationship. Every time he went through something, prayer, anointing oil, relationship, relationship, calling upon the name of the Lord, prayer, 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 seeking the Lord, amen? Your victory... Your answer tonight is Jesus Christ. So tonight, if that's you right now, before we go any further, I know there's many in this room tonight. God has brought you here. You thought, you know, watch this. You thought you're, oh, I'm going to, you know, football and Super Bowl. And all. But he brought you here because he loved you so much to get right with him. Which is, and watch this, the greatest miracle of all is salvation. Getting right with the holy God. There's not 20 ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. And tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. 
And if that's you right now on the count of three, let me see your hand on the count of three, on the count of three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want to get right with God. I'm not where I need to be, and I want to make sure that I am right with the Holy God. If death comes knocking at your door, do you know that you know a week from now, a month from now, do you know that you'll be going to heaven? Tonight, if you know that you're not where you need to be, tonight is your night to make sure. And it's not too late because you're breathing, amen, because the devil would say you've, met, you've messed up too much, you've done too much. No, you haven't. Listen, if you're in this place, there's still time to get it right. Get it under the blood of Jesus and move forward and be the champion that God's called you to be. If that's you right now, tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Nobody leaving the sanctuary. Nobody moving right now. If that's you on the count of three and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to get right with God. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to surrender my heart to the Lord. If that's you on the count of three, one, two, three, let me see your hands. Quickly, quickly. Go look at this. Oh, yes, all over, 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 all over. All... Quickly. And you know what? In this church, and that's why you, you're part, that's why you guys belong in this church. And we don't have time limits in this church. Amen. We just whatever, God knows what needs to be done. Amen. We don't have praise the Lord tonight. Before we go any further, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna pray and then and then we'll take pictures, all that good stuff. Praise the Lord. Well, watch this now. Every hand that went up, I want you to quickly quickly step out of your chair. I was gonna just pray for you right there, but you know what? Tonight, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna rush this. This is this is this is this is this is this is priceless tonight. Amen. This is holy right now. Not that we rush it other times, but tonight I just feel the spirit of God leading me tonight. Every hand that went up. Just for a couple minutes, I want you to, I want you to, and I want you to lead him to Jesus tonight, okay? I want you to pray the prayer of salvation. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Praise the Lord, amen. Every hand that went up, every hand that went up, I want you to quickly just step to, out of your seats and come to this altar. Quickly, 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 quickly. Hallelujah. Just stand right here, right here, just for a face in here. Quickly, yes, look at this. Come on, church, look at this. This is awesome. This is awesome. Look at this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They're still coming. They're still coming. Look at this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Still coming. Still coming. Still coming. Come on now. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. This is glorious. Come on now. Nudge your neighbor and say, do you need to be up there? I'll go with you if you just need some encouragement. Come on now. We don't want to miss anybody. Tonight, today is the day of salvation. Amen. The Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on now. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I see more people moving, moving around. I see still, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. Anybody else? Hallelujah. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. This is awesome. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody else? I still see more people walking up. I still, yes, yes. Just get as close as you can. Hallelujah. All right. And I want all of us to pray this prayer together. And everybody walk up here in the front. We're going to pray. And then we're going to go back to our seats. And then we're going to get organized here for pictures and all that good stuff. But watch this. If you just pray this, if you're up here right now, after you pray this prayer, very important to keep doing the right thing. The miracle starts right now. The greatest miracle. Jesus coming in your heart and forgiving your sins. But watch this. But now you got to do the possible. The possible from this point on to keep moving forward is to be in church, read the word, pray. Amen. Get in church, read the word, and pray. So find a good church. We'd love to have you here. We'll help you with that. Amen. And get involved. That's how, that's how you position yourself by being in the right place for the next door that God would have for you. Amen. That's how you don't miss the next step. Praise God. So watch this. So after the, after the service, there's Bibles in the bookstore if you need Bibles to get you started. Tomorrow after service, we have, we're we going to have a new believers class right after service right after service so I want to encourage you if you're here for that and I see a lot of faces here that have come from outreach and for the first time I have to tell you if you mean business which I see you do expect to see you here tomorrow amen come tomorrow and then we have the class right afterwards amen to get you started to move in that direction so you can be the champion that God's called you to be amen I'm here to tell you your greatest days are ahead I said your greatest days are ahead your greatest days are ahead your greatest days are ahead 
Hallelujah. Okay, ready to pray? Amen. I'm gonna, Brian, would you lead us in a prayer of salvation? Bow your heads, bow your heads. Focus on Jesus. Say it and believe it. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I renounce all the sins of my life. I renounce everything that's not of God. And I give them all to you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. All my sins. And I call on you today because I believe that you rose from the dead and that you live now and forevermore. I am saved because I called on the name Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. That's it. You are saved because you called on the name Jesus. Rejoice. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, what I'm going to ask us to do right now, as we sing this song, let's sing it a couple more verses. I'm going to ask you guys all go back to your sleep so we can get, oh, oh and I, we will right, give me a second. Come find me right after service right here, okay? Praise God. We got you. Praise the Lord. I got you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got you. Praise the Lord. So watch this. If we can all go back to our seats. Praise the Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you. Watch this now. Well, Brian's going to be back with us tomorrow morning. Invite somebody. Amen. Invite somebody. I'm telling you, saw the, you saw what happened here tonight. I believe if you get somebody here tomorrow that does not know Jesus, they will walk out of this place with, the, with Jesus in their heart. Amen. So invite somebody. He'll be back here tomorrow, 1030 service. Don't forget breakfast between 9 and 10. We're going to line up on this side starting from the back. Let's start from the back. Whoever wants, whoever's got something to get signed or a, a football to get autographed or just a quick picture, okay? We're going to start from this side over here, up this way, and then we'll go out this way. Okay, so this, so we'll line up right here. You, you guys, come on. That's right. I see a football. So this way, this way, this way, this way. You've been so good. You've been so good. Hallelujah. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. You saved my soul. Save my soul, you save my soul, you save my soul.